Hello class, this is section 5.5 .5, and in this video we are going to discuss a proof that a regular sturm liouville problem only has real eigenvalues. So we are going to have to rule out all the complex eigenvalues. Before we begin, we should talk a little bit about complex numbers. So remember, a complex number is written down as z equals x plus i y, where i is defined as the square root of minus 1. So there's this concept called complex conjugation. So z bar is equal to x minus i y. So complex conjugation takes i to minus i. So we say that z bar is a conjugate of z. That's simple enough. So this is our regular sturm liouville problem. It consists of an equation and some boundary conditions. So lambda here is an eigenvalue and f is the corresponding eigenfunction. Remember that for a regular sturm liouville problem, we have a few conditions. In particular, px, qx, and sigma x are all real functions. And also, all the betas are real. So why is that helpful? So consider this. Let's say we want to conjugate both sides of the equation, replace all the i's in the equation minus i. Clearly, if the equation holds before, it should still hold if we replace all the i's with minus i. But only the only functions that have, the only terms that have i's in them that might be complex are lambda and f. The eigenvalue and the eigenfunction are the only terms that might be complex. So if we conjugate, we'll replace all the i's with minus i here, 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 and here. It turns out, and oh, yeah, don't forget the uh, boundary conditions as well. If you conjugate both sides of the boundary condition, replace all the i's with minus i. And what we get here is that if lambda and f are an eigenvalue and eigenfunction of a sturm liouville problem, then conjugate of lambda and conjugate of f must also be an uh, eigenvalue and eigenfunction of a sturm liouville problem. So let's think about what happens if we do indeed have a complex eigenvalue we can write down the sturm liouville equation in the operator form. So LF plus lambda sigma x fx equals 0. And L of f bar plus lambda bar sigma x fx equals 0, f bar x equals 0. And since these are going to be self-adjoint. Remember, f and f bar obey the same boundary conditions over here. So we, L is self-adjoint for these two eigenfunctions. And we can perform a similar calculation like we did in the previous video. We label the first equation 1 and the second equation 2. And we see what happens when we try to multiply f bar times 1 minus f times 2. And we get the equation f bar lambda f minus f, no, it's not lambda f, sorry, f bar lf minus f lf bar equals lambda bar sigma x f times f bar minus lambda sigma f bar times f. And we integrate on both sides with respect to AB. AB, F bar LF minus F L F bar equals the integral of lambda bar minus lambda F F bar sigma x equals, not zero, sorry, dx on both sides. A to B. Now remember that L is self-adjoint, so this entire term goes to zero. 
we can of course also pull the lambda terms out since they don't depend on x and we just get a b f x f bar x sigma x equals to zero so clearly either lambda bar minus lambda is equal to zero or f x f bar x sigma x is equal to zero but here's something you guys should notice if you multiply any complex number by its conjugate, this is just going to be x plus i y times x minus i y. This you can use the difference of squares equation. You get x squared minus i y squared, or x squared minus i squared y squared. But i squared is minus one, so you just get x squared plus y squared a sum of two squares, which is always going to be greater than or equal to zero. So multiplying a complex number by its conjugate must always give you something non-negative. And one of our conditions for a regular sturm louisville problem is that sigma x is also greater than zero. But this means these two facts imply that the integral of a, b, f, x, f bar, x, remember this is positive because you're multiplying a complex number by its conjugate, sigma x, this must actually be greater than zero. In fact, it has to be strictly greater than zero because the only way to get x squared plus y squared equal to zero is if, 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 if both x and y were zero and f is clearly not zero. So this is strictly greater than zero. But the only way to get this equation to be equal to zero then is if lambda bar minus lambda equals zero or lambda bar equals lambda. So if we write down lambda equals x plus i y, this implies that x minus i y equals to x plus i y or two i y equals zero, y equals zero. And this implies that, that lambda equals x, which means that lambda is just a real number. And we are done. Uh, eigenvalues have to be real.